Good morning, everybody. This is Jeff Goldberg for the Sales Pro Network here on Facebook Live with another great interview on a Friday. And as you know, I set up the Sales Pro Network to elevate the profession of sales. It's a place where salespeople can come and ask questions, get coaching and advice. They can share their successes and challenges. And every Friday, we do a live interview with somebody fantastic who can add value to the sales community. And this week is no exception. I'm excited to welcome my friend, Gene Brown. Good morning, Gene. Hey, Jeffrey, how are you? Good to I, see you. Uh, thank you, sir. I'm outstanding and it's good to see you. So, um, Gino, uh, would you please tell everybody just a little bit about your background? Gene is a master facilitator, a master network, and uh, is part of the ABA, American Business Associates Group. Gino, would you just tell everybody a little bit about your background and what brought you to becoming a, uh, a, uh, a master networker? Well, uh, or a uh, or a facilitator, a, ma a, facilita a, a facilitator of networking groups. There you go. Uh, ac actually, I think uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, I was involved in the civil rights movement. And that threw me into community organization and facilitating community organizations of uh, of people in the South and then uh, in the mountains of Kentucky. And that's really where I picked up the whole uh, skill set of managing groups of people. And, uh, and then I uh, went into uh, a trade. Uh, I was a rigger in a shipyard and I was the um, business agent for the iron workers union of my my business my uh, union local and that really was uh where i got uh, into very intense facilitation of groups got it okay uh and and, and, and what led you, what led you to aba well um my partner in aba um is also my partner in life and when the two of us got together um, she said, you might be interested in this, but I want you to do two things first. One, uh, go to Sandler sales training. Uh, and the other was uh, to get involved in um, uh, the, what's it, Jeffrey, you know the name of the, uh, 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 the uh, self-development community that we both experienced. Landmark Forum? Landmark Forum, yes. Got it. And what, 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 why did you go to sale? Not, not that particular. Why did you need sales training in order to be a facilitator? I had to really come to understand. Um, Ellen really understood before I did that I had to understand uh, how it is to communicate in the business world in a way that um, I was aware of the bottom line and um, uh, that really was uh, awake. And I had sort of a resistance to that. Uh, and she thought that Sandler would uh, really put me in the right track, uh, which it did in that it exposed me to uh, the other person's views, that I had to be aware of where the client was coming from rather than bringing something to them i had to do some listening Got it. And, okay. and, and of course uh, of course ellen is ellen volpe your partner in life and crime right yes yeah 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 Got it. good morning to yeah. keith ginsburg good morning to brent barth good morning john harnett good morning fran hepler uh and good morning everybody else who's listening so let's get into some questions um how do you actually define networking what what, what do you see at, at, when we say the word networking what are we talking about gene well, from my perspective, I'm talking about uh, individuals in business leveraging each other's influence and connections to get to opportunities more effectively, more efficiently, and to have a good time doing it. That to me is what networking is about. Okay, so, so you're leveraging other people's influence. Uh, and it, in doing it in a pleasant and a very humane way. Okay. And in order to do what, though? Uh, to close more business. 
And Everybody to do, and, but, but not just to close more business, but also to do it in a way that is uh, pleasant and humane. That is, you're relating to people in a, in a way where you help them and they help you. And do you find that that's, so it's, <laughs> do you find that that's not the way most people do it? Uh, yeah, I think that there's uh, an approach to networking that can be transactional. And uh, if it becomes too transactional, it doesn't have that human quality that we need. Uh, that understanding um, of each other and uh, what seems to happen is that it has less life. By that I mean when when people come into my communities, the idea is is that I want them to think about uh, that they're creating relationships that happen to be business relationships that will follow them through their career. That this isn't a uh, a short. If you look at it from a short range point of view, you're losing that connection that attracts you to people and attracts people to you. Okay, so that makes sense. Sure, of course, you always make sense to me, Gene. I'm not sure what that says about me, but you always make sense to me. Um, <laughs> Many people, I find, seem to confuse networking with selling, and they try to sell in the group. I, I can't tell you how many times, not at your organization, which of course I belong to ABA, but at many times I'll be at an organization where people are introducing themselves with what we tend to call our brief commercial or elevator pitch, and they'll end it right. with this sentence, which is, and I'd love to do business with all of you. Now, that always makes me cringe. Um, how do you feel about something like that? Should we be selling into the group too, or is it really meant for something else? It's really meant for something else. However, that can be a part of it. But if you lead with that, what it is is that you immediately change the conversation into a transactional arrangement. Now, look, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's the angle you want to go with, then go with it, but know that it's inappropriate in a true networking situation. It really is inappropriate. It, it's perhaps inappropriate, it's not the right word. It's counterproductive. It sets the wrong scene. Yeah. It, the wrong it, it, dynamic between individuals. It, it's kind of salesy. And it, it's kind of like the salesperson that makes it all about them instead of making it about the prospect. Uh, and, and it almost takes away the generosity that is necessary in my yeah. less experienced it, opinion than yours to, to be an effective networker. Yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's hard to put a finger on it, but it it it's totally out of context. the The idea of a networking group is that we will help each other by making connections, and I demonstrate to you where my influence is. And then I say, well, where is your influence and how can we help each other get to opportunities in a more effective and a more pleasant way? Hmm. That's completely different with I have a service or a solution. Uh, are you interested? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, I mean, you've been doing this a long time and, and you've seen both good and bad networkers. Can you talk a little bit about the qualities of the best networkers, the most effective networkers? You know, I've been around networking for 16 years now, and you know, you see some people who are very generous, get lots of referrals, and others who just seem to complain that they never do. And there always seem to be a few things in common with, with, with both. But I'd love to hear from you with your expertise. What are the qualities an effective networker needs to have, or in your in your observation, what do they have? Well, in, in bouncing off of what you just said, the word that came to my mind um, is generosity. If you lead with generosity, and then actually behind the generosity is an understanding of, oh, this is what this person does. And let me think about how I might be able to help them. And with that thought process, 
then you lead with a generous uh, question. Hey, would it make sense if I introduce you to a trust and estate attorney? Knowing that, yeah, it would make plenty of sense based on what I understand about the person and what that person just told me. So you're leading with a generosity. Now, one of the things that I think gets forgotten, and it's one of the things that people, it's a nuance that folks don't really connect with is that there's another, there's another part to that generosity, and that would be to, act, to, to show them how they might help you. So a lot of folks will be very generous, and then they'll take the high moral ground and, well, I'm waiting. And that's that attitudinal headspace is, uh, it's, it floats through the air and it is recognized for what it is. Oh, he's that type of guy. So, um, first of all, good morning to Donald Levine. He says hello. Um, so, hey. it, it, it's almost like we have to be generous with zero expectation of anything in return, even though we all pay our money and put in our time and we, we do uh, certainly hope to get something out of it. It's really about giving with no expectation of return. Is, does that sound right? Yeah, it is. It, it does sound right. However, it is right. However, the component, it's, a, it's, a, it's like tennis. It's, um, it's a give and take. So the component that shouldn't be left out is, hey, Jeffrey, um, gee, you know, given what I know about you, let me show you how you might be able to help me. Now, that's, uh, it's, it's so hard to, to quantify or to make into steps. Uh, it might not be what you do first, but at some point, the dialogue has to be two-way and you have to demonstrate that you are looking for a two-way, uh, a, a two-way, uh, uh, conversation. I'm thinking I think, of, go ahead. I, I think that uh, you're bringing up an important point here. Um, a lot of people, I think, are uncomfortable making that specific a request. Hey, I did something nice for you. Let me show you how you can help me too. I think that's an awkward conversation. I know for me that um, I believe in the law of reciprocity, that if I do something nice for you, you're going to tend to want to do something nice for me, but I'm not expecting it. But at some point, uh, in, in, I think, all relationships, the possibility exists that you give, 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 and you never get back. Now, my feeling and understanding about networking is there may be some people in your group or in your network that you can give to that can never give back to you. It's just, it's just never going to happen or, that, or, or vice versa. Right. My feeling is that um, it doesn't necessarily, if I give you a referral gene, you may never give me one, but I believe somehow I am going to get paid back by the universe, by somebody else somehow. But you're actually suggesting that, it, if, at least it sounds like it, that if you are giving, 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 and you don't seem to be getting back from that person, that it's appropriate to go to them and say, hey, you know, let me help you out a little bit. Let me, let me show you how you might be able to help me. Not, not making a direct request by saying, hey, I want a referral, but Kind of more gentle is that what you're saying Gene? yeah absolutely it's a and, and listen with that particular person that scene that you just set up it might very well be that i would understand that his brother-in-law does what i do <laughs> i like to bring in the brother-in-law thing and so consequently but i still like the guy and i still want to help him um but i want to understand where he's coming from and is this a not a two-way street but in, oh, Gene, I, 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 you know, Gene, I really can't help you, but there's someone else in the group and I've been working. Oh, that's great. You're, I, you know, that's sort of what you're bringing up that, and I am in agreement with that, that you give with no expectation. Uh, that is the spirit. But behind the spirit or with the spirit is this um need this human um experience of 
let's go a little bit deeper. And how do, are we going to relate to each other? So the, it's the spirit first, but you know, we're grounded in reality. You have to figure out, I, I'm trying to think of this fellow who's at the Wharton School, the uh, uh, Penn State, he's quite well known. And he, he uh, I can't think of his name, but he talks about the burnout factor where there'll be a, a person will come into a, a, a referral community. I like to call them referral communities. A person will come into the referral community really strong, start giving like there's no tomorrow, and then get burnt out. At, the guy's name is Adam Grant. Uh, so, uh, and that doesn't work either. So, um, I, I don't know. It's it's such a it's it's very hard to quantify, and I really work on it um, because it's so individual. I I have people in my group that are by nature transactional, and I'm I try and move them in a direction to begin to see that this is a this is a human dialogue, uh, a part of being on the planet as a human being, and you've got to understand the depth of it and, and look at it from a long range view, be generous, but always be frank. And uh, I, I personally, and this is related to what you were saying, I personally have no problem in, in showing people how they can help me. And the reason is, that everybody knows that I'm doing, I'm going over the top to help. So uh, it's, I'm just being normal and saying, hey, let me show you how to help, how to help me. But yeah. always leading with the spirit of giving. Yeah. Don Levine says, not everybody is in a, it, not everybody that you help is in the position to help you. And you, yeah. don't, do it, you don't do it for that reason. One of the things right. that I find, Gene, um, is, I don't want to call it guilt, but but uh, when somebody does something nice for me, like give me a referral, of course, I'm amazingly appreciative because a well done referral, I say, puts you halfway to a sale. Yeah. Um, but I can't give a, a referral to everybody, I, even though I want to. It's, you know, the timing has to be right. The situation right. has to be right. But what I do is uh, I, I found uh, that there are other ways to give back, like in my work as a sales coach and sales trainer, I offer advice and help to anybody in, in our uh, business development network. And I'm happy to do that. It's my way of paying back, even if I can't give you a direct referral. Uh, or sometimes it's introducing two people who might be able to be able to help each other where I'm not involved at all. Right. Uh, right. So, I love those situations. Yeah. And that's certainly something I learned from you and Ellen that, you know, it, it's not always about the direct referral for business. Look, that's what we all want. We all want to get a bunch of referrals that turn into business so that we can all make money. But but it just doesn't always work. It's not really linear. And it isn't linear. It, it, it isn't linear. And I, I'm thinking of a funeral that I went to. Uh, okay. Orthodox Jewish funeral. And uh, the rabbi said uh, in the course of his, of his uh, homily, I guess you would call it, that if you're expecting something, it's not a mitzvah. All right, and and I, I can't put it in the context of the situation. Uh, I, I haven't got that artistry, but he was right on the money. No, but you're saying exactly the right thing. If I'm giving you a referral because I expect you to give me one, then it's not a mitzvah right, or, or, right, or a right. gift or a good deed. Right. Uh, so, so you really have to, it's almost like I talk about selling, that when, you know, I always point to my gut when I'm doing that, you can't see this on Zoom, but your come from should be service. How can I serve you? Right. How can I help you? And it should be the same thing in networking. You said something else interesting a moment ago, uh, and I'd like to question you about that. Uh, you, you talked about, you know, uh, would it, I forgot the example you gave, but, you know, uh, would you like to meet a financial advisor? Would, would you like me to introduce you? Yeah. My personal belief is I, I typically don't ask people. I just make the introduction. Huh. Uh, but I, I know there are, there are certainly people that I'm connected with that are regularly, hey, would you like to meet this person? Would you like to meet that person? What's your feeling? Is it appropriate? Is it inappropriate to make an introduction without asking permission to make the introduction first? Or do you think it's okay either way? Well, 
the appropriateness is always tied to the situation and the individuals involved. So it's hard to make a generality. I, by nature, am a very analytical person. So it's my nature. I go, oh, this is uh, this guy is uh, a financial advisor. I know if he's a financial advisor, I know he'd love to meet trust and estate attorneys. So therefore, going with that logic, I I uh, I would make the offer, and 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 I would think that actually I'm quite confident that given my personality and my demeanor that the person would not think it uh, inappropriate or offensive, but would see it as um, a, uh, or again, let, let's stay with it, uh, because I'm depending now on, on the other person recognizing my intent of who I am, the type of person I am, the person I go, oh, hey, no, that, that's not for me. Uh, that you're you're incorrect. Your anal your analytical uh, approach did not work with me. Well, I would go. Oh, okay. I, I'm I'm sorry. Um, let's recorrect. Always, I'm confident of my own genuine concern for wanting to help. Yeah, I get, I get that. But but my question is more about: Do you think it's inappropriate to make the introduction? It, Let's say I have a referral for you. I, I've got somebody I want to introduce you to. I'm convinced it's a good uh, a good introduction. Or maybe right. I'm not 100 percent convinced, but uh, I, I want to take a shot. Is it inappropriate for me to make that introduction with, without reaching out to you first and say, "Hey, Gino, I'd like oh, to." Oh, okay. You. I understand what you're saying. Yes, it would be better uh, to set it up first. Is that is is that what you're speaking about? That is, that's exactly yeah. what I'm speaking okay. about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I can tell you from from my, this is. Maybe it's a personality thing uh, or an individual thing, but I, I know that uh, there's a gentleman who joined the group I'm in uh, fairly recently. I actually introduced him to the group, and he regularly reaches out to me. You know, Jeff, I just need a minute of your time, and it's it's he's amazingly generous. It's it's and he's so sweet, but it's always, hey, I want to introduce you to so and so. Would you like to meet that person? And I'm always like, I trust you. You don't have to ask my permission, but thank you so much. Please just make the introduction to me. The type of person I am, and this is not everybody. It's just like. I don't want to waste the time with that. I, I don't need that two minute conversation asked by permission. If we have a relationship like yeah. it, Eugene, if you wanted to introduce me to somebody, first of all, I'd be honored. And second of all, you would never need to ask me. I trust you implicitly. Right. And here's the other thing for me. Uh, I'm, uh, as I think you've heard me say many times, I'm a big fan of the phrase, you never know, which is why right. I'll, go, I'll go out on almost any <laughs> blind date. So what's the worst that happens? You introduce me to somebody via email or, or via phone. We arrange to have a, an opportunity call or a meeting where we get to know each other. What's the worst that happens? Didn't turn into anything? Right. Well, but the other side is there's so much possibility uh, in, in that meeting that you as the introducer couldn't possibly even know, and me as the recipient couldn't possibly know. So I always say, take the chance. And, and you know, Ellen, your partner in crime, has shown me way more than once that my worldview that yeah. says, why would I want to talk to that person? I, I can't see what I could possibly do for them or they could possibly do for me. She's shown me over and over and over that I just need to shut that voice up because, um, and I know she denies it, but I know Ellen for a fact sees um, sees the network of networking, the, the spider webs of networking, kind of like Neo sees the matrix. I, I'm constantly stunned by it. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of just make the introduction. So I want to ask you one more time to be clear. Is it inappropriate to do it that way or is it that just personal taste? Um, it's it's just personal. I, I, I uh, uh, it's really interesting. You bring up um, you bring up a good point. I was recently talking with uh, and I'll get specific. Hey, we're all business people on 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 uh, on this call. So you'll understand. I was talking with a, a guy that I really respect, uh, uh, a architect, and he really uh, is very interested in uh, he. His movement is if you're going to his headspace is if you're going to introduce me, please no more uh, office interior people. I uh, I'm up to here with office interior people. And uh, I really would just like uh, referrals to uh, 
qualified prospects. Okay, so now here's something that I've observed, and I've been doing this for 22 years. What's happened is that the digital world has turned up the dial so that we really can't, as human beings, respond to the amount of information that is coming in. And so consequently, this gentleman um, is making the statement, look, I'm overwhelmed. I can't, I, I can't take another, uh, another interior uh, uh, furniture person, please. I, I can't do it anymore. I understand that. Yeah, I, see, I, I personally see that as short-sighted. Look, everybody has to do what's right for them, but I, 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 I think the thinking would be, I'm an architect, I'm already connected to five or whatever the number is, interior uh, design people. I can't refer business to any more of them, but they might be able to refer business to you or you might be able to introduce them to somebody else. Uh, uh, good morning to Rich Isaac, who says, I completely ag agree, Jeff, you never know. And Gene, it's so good to see you. I guess he probably needs hey, to hi, Rich. fix his glasses. Um, can, can we talk a little bit about the opposite direction? What are some common networking mistakes that people make? Oh, gosh. Um, the, I think the most common is the confusion between a, a transactional spirit and a, a generous spirit. I, I would say that um, that is the, without a doubt, the biggest faux pas. Uh, I, um, I mean, there are, see, here's the deal. We can analyze until the cows come home, but in the end, we're all responding to each other in terms of the spirit that is conveyed. And so that spirit is what leads the conversation. And if the spirit is out of whack in terms of, uh, hey, how, how do you think we can work together and help each other? Uh, and the spirit is more, hey, what are you and I gonna do together and how can you help me and how can I help you? Now, we, I just painted two different pictures with words, but doesn't really cover what spirit is. And it's, that's why it's so difficult to have um, this conversation or to its, for, you know, for 22 years, I've been trying to work with people about networking and uh, I have to, at some point, a person has to realize that they're leading with their spirit not with their words, not with their action. It is, the action is a measurement system after, but it's the spirit that cut, catches people. That's what touches people. That's what sets their frame to listen to what you're saying. And I think that's, that is really the most important um, aspect if you want a referral community to work well for you, you have to recognize that reality. So um, it, 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 it sounded that to me, answer your question? well, yeah, it, it, it sounded to me like you actually said the same exact words twice, but you just had a different tone of voice. Uh, yeah. But, but I, I get what you mean with spirit. Um, I, I think that one of the um, mistakes that I've seen, besides the obvious one that we talked about before, you know, and I'd love to do business with all of you, uh, the another mistake I think I've seen over the years is that um, people don't want to put in the time, or they don't expect uh -huh. to have to put in the time. You know, you 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 pay your money, you come to a meeting every two weeks, or once a week, or once a month, depending on the group that you're in, and it's like, where the hell are my referrals? Except it it takes more. I, I know for me, um, and Rich says uh, it's the spirit that touches people. Brilliant, Gene. Um, for for me, it's a matter of developing a relationship of trust. Um, and uh, I've, I've been balled out by my coach for saying this more than once, but, but um, my feeling is, and I think this is as opposed to the way most people network. I think most people network like, hey, Gene, I'm going to make an introduction for you. Please don't make me uh, look bad. Mm -hmm. I, I go in the opposite direction. I, ex I expect if I make an introduction for you that you better make me look good. I expect when I introduce Gene Brown to someone that I get a call from that person saying, wow, thank you so much for that introduction. Gene is fantastic. And I can only do that because I know Eugene. 
And, and I know I can trust you implicitly that, that mm -hmm. you would not do or say anything that would damage my relationship because who am I going to introduce you to? I'm going to introduce you to my clients and my prospects. And right. after my kids and my dog, it's about the most valuable property I have and my integrity. Maybe kids, dog integrity, dog, kids, integrity. Dog integrity, kid, no, I like them all three, but, but it, it, it's really my, my clients and my prospects, that's how I feed my children. So I, I need to protect that relationship unless I've developed a relationship of complete trust with you. I'm not comfortable making those introductions. I think, and I'd like to hear your opinion, too often people join a group and it's like, I've been here three weeks, where's my leads? What, what's going on? And they're not putting in the time. They're not having what we call an ABA opportunity calls or what BNI calls one-on-ones because I think that's where it really gets done. Can you speak to that a little bit, Gene? Well, you know, that's interesting that you would bring that up because I, I refer back to what I, what I was saying moments ago. And that is um, 22 years ago when I uh, first, uh, I guess the, the first person that I met in, in sales training was Richard, Richard Isaac, okay? Lucky and you. 22 years ago, it was a different heat under the kettle. And what's happened is, is that with the digital world, everything is turned up. And so everyone feels, hey, look, I've been here. I paid for this thing. I've been here three months. I haven't, I've gotten zilch. What's up? Uh, and I, I understand that. And it's one of the distinctions between Ellen and I, because I, I try and bring that into the picture in understanding that the openness has to balance with the reality of our lives nowadays and people are so driven they are we are all driven the quality of my life between now and 20 years ago is is completely different it's just so high powered because of this this tool we have this computer tool that we have ellen said to me you know you're on uh 955 with jeff what are you doing and i'm saying i'm answering people that wrote me last night and if i don't do it now i'll miss the spirit at 12 o'clock so i had to do it and and that is the reality that we're dealing with and I, my feeling is face that reality and try it, build it into the conversation. Otherwise, you're going to miss the person that eventually could do well in the group in a referral community, but is locked into that mad hatter life that we're all involved in. So um, you, you brought up the digital a couple of times, and we're certainly living in an amazingly digital world right now due to yeah. COVID. And, you know, there have been some major shifts in everybody's networking, uh, mostly that we're not face to face anymore. Um, how, how do you see that affecting the nature of business development in a networking organization? That and, 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 and is there anything that people need to be aware of now until we get back to normal, whatever that is, until we get back to being able to be face to face? hopefully sometimes in, in the next six to 12 months, I'm hoping. But is there anything people need to be aware of in order to maximize the effectiveness of their networking efforts during this particular time where everything is virtual? That is such a great question. Thank you, sir. I've been really thinking about this. So I have, I have a daughter and granddaughters, and they're all pissing and moaning about how horrible Zoom is. And don't I find it horrible? And quite frankly, I don't distinguish between the conversation that you and I are having right now, whether or not I would be uh, in flesh and blood with you or not. Uh, in fact, I find that when I think about it, I go, oh my God, I really like this person, but I realize it. I never really met them <laughs> except on Zoom, and yet we communicate very well. So in answer to your question, it, I, okay, the, the answer to the question is don't do, don't multitask when you're, when you're, when you're on Zoom. Be, as uh, what's his name said, 
30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, be here now. Be here now. Be present. Be present. Yeah, I, 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 I could not agree with you more. In fact, I uh, recently you know, had this discussion with Ellen. Um, it, it's, it's always pretty amazing to me. You get on a Zoom meeting with 20, 30, 40 other people. Lou Kami just said the same thing, be present. And um, everybody's waiting for their turn to speak. Yeah. I know certainly I am. Uh, and Ellen is very generous in giving me plenty of time to speak. But everybody wants to make their introduction. And everybody wants to be listened to when they're making their introduction or when they're speaking. And I'm always stunned. That's the amazing thing about Zoom. You know, you've made your introduction. Now somebody else is speaking. You're watching people. And they're, you can tell they're looking at their phones or they're, they're doing something else. And it, 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 to me, it really takes away from the experience. Um, and by the way, it's the same thing in person. You know, look, in, in a two hour meeting, which is what we do at ABA, you know, I'll look at my phone occasionally just to see if anything's crucial. But for the most part, that be here now, that be present, be mindful uh, and be courteous and be generous with other people is so important. Because if not, if you're not, I say that's damaging the relationship that you Absolutely. so badly need in order to make those referrals and. Uh, do all the things that uh, that you want uh, a business development group to do for you. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm thinking of uh, if I'm a facilitator in a live meeting uh, and uh, someone gets up to leave the meeting, I'm noticing are they grabbing their briefcase and their coat and telling me they're going to the bathroom uh, because I know that they're splitting now, uh, and so consequently, there's a bit of a control that I have as a facilitator. Oh, I'm going to have to get up in front of Gino and book uh, out of this meeting, and he's not going to like that. But I can't. I don't have that control as uh, on Zoom. I, I had the situation just recently where I had a new member telling a story about how a very personal story about how she came into her, the business that she's in. And I realized I made the mistake of her telling the story at the end of the meeting. And when she came to tell her story from her heart, half the people were gone. It pissed me off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting, because, uh, you know, uh, Valerie Lampy, who's another, good morning, Valerie, who's another master networker and a great facilitator, uh, just opened my eyes to something. She wrote, I take notes. Which ah. It never occurred to me that when you are looking down, when I'm talking, you might be taking notes. Thank you, Valerie, for opening my eyes. But uh, I still say sometimes it's pretty damn obvious that people just aren't paying attention. The, the other thing that and this is just me, I, I, I guess I'm a little bit anal about stuff, but um, there are some simple things that people can do uh, to be more courteous and present, like putting yourself on mute when anybody else is speaking. Uh, I, I again, I. I guess I'm just old and cranky, but you know, the thing about Zoom is the screen shows whoever is making noise at that time. So if you're, it's your turn to speak, Gene, but I cough, the screen's going to go to me or right. if my dog barks or something yeah. like that. So I think there are some very simple things we can do in the, this virtual world for now that make the experience better for everybody. Um, I'm wondering, Gene, how do you feel? Uh, I'm sure you're aware that some organizations, not ABA, of course, but they tend to force referrals. You actually get penalized if you haven't made referrals in a week. How do you feel about organizations that actually penalize you for, for uh, not giving referrals? Well, um, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I wrestle with that myself. Uh, as you know, as a facilitator of a, com of a referral community, I'm also a leader of that community. And there's a distinction um, in the real world <laughs> of between being a facilitator and being a leader. They're actually two different roles. Uh, I wrestle with that because I want people to know that they have a responsibility in a community and that those responsibilities are quite specific uh and i take it upon myself as the facilitator and the leader 
to remind people of those responsibilities, but I don't think it works to um, uh, harshly legislate them. And again, this comes back to the spirit of it. Sometimes you have to remind people, hey, dude, you know. I was just going to ask you about that. So, so somebody comes in, they join, they start getting some referrals, but, you know, months go by and you see they're, they're, they're just not giving anything. And as the facilitator, I know you, you guys are pretty well aware of what's going on in your groups. Right. How long do you let somebody go or, or do you just let them go forever as long as they're paying their their membership dues, do you just let them go forever if they're not being generous? Or is there some point where you have to have a conversation? Oh, this is a, this is a, uh, this is a very, uh, we wrestle with this, you know, uh, no, we're, okay. a, we're a fee-based organization. Sure. People are paying us on a monthly basis. Um, I, here's what I do. I watch, I listen, I watch. Hey, you know, uh, you've been coming three months. Um, now you're telling me you're not getting anything, but you really haven't given anything. Um, do you think this is the right group for you? Hmm. Because, uh, um, listen, the other people in the group, they go, hey, this guy is, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe he's, uh, um, He's a key person. He's a uh, uh, M&A attorney. And um, he hasn't, that's a key in, cert in certain groups, the, given the milieu of the group, uh, that could be a, a key chair. And he's a taker, but not a giver, not a good thing. So I think it's my responsibility to bring it up, but I don't, um, I bring it up softly, but at, at some point, the chickens do come home to roost. I like the way you said it, Gene. Uh, you know, do you think this is the right group for you? So it's actually a discussion. Yeah, so, sometimes it's, totally sometimes it's just not a good fit. Sometimes, uh, just yeah. like a job, you know, you may not be in, in sales. I often see salespeople just aren't succeeding in a particular organization, but they go somewhere else and they do fine. So sometimes it's just the group is not a good fit for them or they're not a good fit for the group. Um, besides direct, look, again, I, my belief is everybody joins a networking group because they want referrals. They want to give and get referrals. But besides direct referrals, what other benefits uh, do you see a good networking organization offering its members? So from my perspective, um, I like to sow the seed to look upon the community as a milieu where you will establish relationships that will follow you through your career in this particular marketplace. So when I say that, people go, oh, what are you talking about? I mean, you know, they sort of, uh, uh, I mean, there's so, there, there are a lot of different networking groups and that's not something that people normally hear. They figure, hey, I've joined the group, I'm, I've, uh, I'm paying my dues, um, I'm showing up, uh, I'm not married uh, to this group, uh, I can go at any time. I'm sowing the idea that really, okay, you're in a group, but that group is in a marketplace and that marketplace for most people will be where they will spend their career. And so for them to take, uh, hey, I show up now, I show up later, I come now, I come later, for them to take that uh, laissez-faire uh, approach doesn't really contribute to their influence in the marketplace. And therefore, um, they really should be looking at their referral community as an environment where they're establishing uh, their persona and their influence, and that will follow them through their career. That's especially true in Long Island. This is a community unto itself. It's very incestuous here, absolutely. But I I'm thinking more of, so 
if the number one reason that people join is I want referrals, I, I'm happy to give some and I, I expect to Almost. get some. Yeah. But, but they're, they're, to me, I'll just say what it is for me. So uh, in our group, I, I, I have a sense of actual community, use the word community. Yeah. I, and I think right now, especially because we're not getting together, we're not going on sales calls in person for the most part, we're not meeting in person. I actually very much look forward to these meetings because I, I hate to use an over uh, used term, but for me, the group that I'm in feels like family. It yeah. feels like home, even though we have guests coming in and some people have been there longer and some people less, but it feels like I'm hanging out with family and that feels really good to me. I, I also find that um, it's an incredibly valuable source of business intelligence. Yeah. I get to learn things about the Long Island market or for me, I, 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 I sell internationally, but uh, the group is certainly the Long Island market for the most part. And everybody knows everybody. Everybody's interconnected. I, I, I take mm -hmm. it back. Not everybody knows everybody, but somebody in my group knows the person that I want to do business with or I'm thinking about. And more than once, I, I've had had somebody say, oh, I, I would keep away from them. They don't pay their bills or something like that. And of course, you know, right, right, we right. keep everything in the room just like in Vegas. But uh, that, that's very valuable intelligence. Plus, the other thing for me, which never, never ends is because the group's exclusive, you know, that I'm the only sales coach in my group. There, there's one premiums and promotions person and one marketing person like right. that. Um, there's a wide variety of experts I can turn to when I need help. So for me, it's not just about the referrals, although again, that's my favorite part. It's all that other stuff. Besides what I mentioned, is there anything you think of that a group uh, should be offering its members or the, the value it brings? You know, uh, bring up a really interesting point. And it's, um, it's a hard one, however, to uh, to sell. To, we, I mean, this is this is a this is a uh, uh, a, uh, a program on selling. Um, you know, when you when you touch on that um, that aspect of it, it's um, it's hard to bring up. It's hard to say, hey, all of the things that you just said. Um, uh, you use the word family, uh, friends, uh, personal development. All of those things happen when it is that you make a commitment to the community. And when you do that, they immediately start to happen. But historically, uh, People look upon networking groups of, oh, hey, oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's a networking. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. You know, I was in BNI and then I was in Latip. They look upon it as, um, I don't know, like a gym membership, maybe. I, or, and maybe that's, unf that's unfair to gyms. Um, yes, yeah. I think that's an apt analogy. It is like a gym membership. If you go to the gym, but you don't lift the weights or you don't work out, you're going to get nothing out of right, it. Right, right. But you're talking about what you're really talking about is personal development. That's really what you're talking about. You're talking about a sense of friendship, uh, 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 a continuity in my life. Uh, um, I'm learning about the marketplace. I'm learning about myself. Those are all difficult for, uh, we sell memberships, uh, we're a membership organization. If I lead with that, uh, uh, people sort of take a step back. So I don't really bring that up until people are actually in a group. And then I, um, I start to integrate that component because in actuality, they're like this. They're like, they're, they go together and your success in networking will, will equal your success in personal development. They're, they're one in the same. So, um, we're quickly running out of time, but I wanted to chat briefly with you about, there's an interface between the process of networking and the process of closing a sale. How, how, do, you, how do you see that? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, pose the question again. 
how do you see the interface between the process of networking and the process of closing a sale? So I'm going to read, I'm going to go back to my definition of a networking community. It's a community of people that get together on a regular basis, demonstrating an authentic interest in each other and sharing with each other their influence in the marketplace. That's, that's sort of the general picture. Now, okay, that's great. Uh, you could say the same thing about the Boy Scouts, okay? Um, so, <laughs> but, but what's the end result? The end result is that we then leverage that influence to get to the close quicker, more effectively, and have a good time doing it. Now, the idea of a networking community is to close more business. But if you if that was the only idea and the idea, and you led with that idea, you would have a transactional environment. So really what it falls back to is I joined because I have an authentic interest in myself and in other people by, by in myself, I mean, personal development and I'm going to interact with these people. I'm going to be generous. And then we will be able to leverage our influence and connection and therefore get to the close in a more effective and pleasant way. So it's almost, uh, it's kind of like we've come full circle. I think you're coming back to spirit. It, yes. It, it, it's yeah. like me talking to a potential coaching client and going into it with, I'd like to make some money as yeah. opposed to, I want to help this person. And by doing that, some money is going to come my way. So it, it, it really comes back to the spirit of it. Uh, it, it you know, prospects, um, they're not interested in you closing a sale. They're interested in them getting some value and them choosing to do business with you. So it right. sounds like you're saying that the process of networking is really very similar. Yes, it is. It, it, it really is. It, it's, you know, that was one of the things I learned at Sandler was the, um, uh, uh, the humanity of selling. Being a working class guy, I, I really, uh, salespeople, oh, you know, two steps back and make the sign of the cross. Uh, but I learned something that that's really what it wasn't about. And, and you're hitting right at, you hit it right at it, Jeff. You hit right at it. It's a, it's a combination of, of, um, of sincere generosity and wanting to help knowing that when you do that, you're, you're actually building power within yourself. But the power can't be the end, the the end in game, the end game, because then it wouldn't work. It, and it's so difficult to explain. <laughs> you know, it's you know, I, 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 I sort of stutter because you step into an umigumi world, you know, and and of course, business people are not umigumi. No, and it's not like we need to be, you know, metaphysical about it. But it, yes, correct. It, it it really is uh, just like in selling. You you've got to have a generous spirit. You've got to be coming from the right place. That that prospects when you're selling a product or service, uh, I say, can smell commission breath. They can smell greed right. or greed like dogs smell fear. And, and I think we've all run into what I like to call sharks in the networking world, where you can just tell. You, just, you can just tell all, they're looking at you and they're thinking, what can I get from this person? So it really is that that more generous spirit, and you used that word beautifully before, um, to, to, that will help you enhance these relationships that you want so that you can get the referrals and all the other stuff. I, I have one last question before we close, and I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this one, but I thought, thought I'd throw it at you anyways, just to put you on the spot. 
given that most people do join a, a networking or business development organization to get referrals, if somebody's doing their job properly in a referral network, how many referrals a, a year can they expect to get? Hmm. They should be getting referrals if they're doing, if they're doing, if they're behaving in the manner that we've discussed, uh, they should be getting um, more referrals than they can count. That's really how it, how it should be working. And if it isn't, then my question to the person who says that it isn't, um, okay, well, let's examine your behavior and spirit. The problem might not be with the environment, but it might be with the attitude that you bring into the environment. Maybe it's not the right thing for you. I, I, I like the way you expressed that. Uh, uh, there was a LinkedIn post that I responded to earlier, uh, uh, and, and the young lady was talking about how at the age of 15, she finally realized that, well, finally, that's actually a young age to do this, but she realized that if she wanted to succeed in life, she was going to have to accept responsibility. That up until then, everything was blame. You know, yeah, yeah. Mom, yeah. this and my dad, this yeah, and yeah, her, yeah. all that. And it's really about accepting responsibility and taking a look at if I'm not getting out of my networking organization the things that I expect to, the first place to do is before you start looking at, well, this networking group sucks, it's what yeah. am I doing? Who am I in the matter? Where? Right. What's my come from? Right. Is that right, Gene? Uh, yeah. And, and now look, there, there might be a, a, le a legit criticism. You might be a, a, a lawyer locked in a group of, uh, of uh, real estate people that, are, uh, that have no relation to your brand of law, your discipline of law, and are more concerned with uh, the tools of the trade. They might all be contractors in one way or another, in which case it's not the right group. Um, you know, I mean, there are... Um, structural arrangements to groups and and one should find the structural arrangement that meets their needs but once that issue has been solved then the next issue is where's your head at brother that's a good one to end on where's your head at brother so gene i'm going to share my screen now and uh would you please tell people if they're interested in aba or speaking with you uh how can they get in touch with you uh I, I would say uh, my email or um, certainly text me or call me. I'm, uh, I'm, I, I always love to meet new people. I really do. I like to meet new people and I, I like to explore where people are at in the marketplace. I'm a lifelong learner. So uh, I, I welcome, I welcome uh, the, the opportunity to have a, a, a sincere conversation. An authentic conversation would be a better word. I'm not quite sure that you have anything other than that, Gene, knowing you as long as I do. And, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time today and your generously sharing your knowledge and advice about how we can all increase our skills and in networking. Uh, any one last tip for 2021 on what people should be doing? Uh, You're the uh, last interview of the year, my friend. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I say good luck to all of us. <laughs> I, I, write, I, was just, I just wrote an email today that I, I, I have the feeling that, um, that, that, human, that our species might have gone beyond, uh, it's, we might have gone beyond, our, we're too big for our britches. There's something wrong here and we need to correct. That's my feeling. And, uh, and be positive and, and and be generous. That's probably the, the best advice anyone could have. I like that message very much. And Sales Pro Network, uh, thank you for a wonderful year. I, I, I appreciate everybody who's showing up for these interviews and everybody who watches them afterwards and everybody who participates. If you're looking to give me a gift, please introduce two other people to the Sales Pro Network so that we can grow this thing. Uh, let's double and triple and quadruple it in the next year. Uh, we won't have any more next week is uh will be the i think the day after christmas and there's then there's new year so i think the first one is either the week after that anyways keep an eye on the sales pro network on facebook and i'll certainly remind you when the next ones are i'm looking forward to a phenomenal year personally i'll just share with you that i'm very very optimistic about the business outcome outlook for the year me um, too I, 
I, I certainly could not say that earlier this year, uh, although knock on wood, my business has done well. I've, I've pivoted and uh, I'm, I'm holding my own, but I know a lot of people have been suffering, but I really do see with this vaccine coming out, if we can get enough people taking it, I think there's a very positive outlook. So please, if I can do anything uh, for anyone, reach out to me through Facebook. You can email me at jeff at jgsalespro.com or my phone is 516-608-4136. And I just thank you all for your participation. And thank you again, Gene. I really appreciate it. Thank you, folks. I really appreciate it. And Jeff, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for thanks for the interview. I really, I really enjoyed it. It's my pleasure, brother. And thank you for your years of friendship and many, many more for us. And as I end all of these, remember, guys, Sales is a game of making things happen. So get out there and make sales happen. Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate. And a very happy new year to us all. Yes. Bye, everyone. Good luck to all of us.